Local productions seen on Delta College Public Media are made possible with support from viewers like you. Thank you. Hello and welcome to Dateline Delta. I'm Dave Morley, member of the Delta College Foundation Board of Directors. On today's show, we'll visit the sonography program and learn about apprenticeships. We will see how Delta College prepared its students for the recent election and take a peek at the recent My Career Quest event. And it to wrap up today's program, we'll see what to look to for when buying a telescope and meet one of Delta College's newest employees. There are so A sonographer produces ultrasonic recordings of internal organs for use by physicians for interpretation and diagnosis. To learn more about the diagnostic medical sonography field, we talked to Kim Bolt, assistant professor. The diagnostic medical sonography program was actually started back in 2000. And we take 14 students a year. So each year we'll have first year students and second year students. And the program is five semesters long. The first two semesters, students are here on campus and in labs, and then the last three semesters, students will go out to their internship or clinical sites four days a week for eight-hour shifts, and then one day a week, they will have classes. The goal of the sonographer is to take a series of images that the radiologist will look at, and the sonographer is playing detective in a way because they are looking at what they're seeing on the screen, what they're finding, and comparing that to the symptoms and the problems that the patient came in with and making choices and decisions as to what images they need to take and basically trying to decide what might be going on with this patient. And then the radiologist will, of course, make an official report on that exam. Our sonography program offers either a certificate option or associate degree option. And I usually advise students to go for the associate degree. That consists of four additional general education courses, and I just think it's important for a student to have a degree. Now, in terms of associate degree versus bachelor's degree, the main thing employers are looking for are that the student is certified or registered. So for students trying to decide if they want to go on and take a bachelor's degree, the main thing I, I talk to them about is you want to look down the road. What are your future plans? If you're interested in administrative, going into leadership, a bachelor's degree would be very helpful. If you would like to eventually go to work for the manufacturing companies, either in sales or application specialists, or in the field of education, such as I'm doing now, that's where the bachelor's degree would be important. But for most students, the associate degree is going to get them hired and well on their way to becoming a very good sonographer. The machines that we use in our lab are very comparable to what the students will be using in the field. For example, we have three GE machines and the students will be uh, working on GE machines in the field. So the students are definitely going to gain that initial experience in lab that will be helpful to them when they go out to clinical. Graduates from our program are going to find employment quickly. In fact, currently we're experiencing a shortage in the field and so our students can have a job by the time they're done and probably with a sign-on bonus. So our employment rates have been very high over the last decade. Oftentimes people associate sonography or ultrasound with babies. Everybody knows that ultrasound is used for scanning babies, but there is so much more that we do. We look at blood vessels, we look at abdominal and pelvic organs, we do muscle skeletal work, so it is not a field that is narrow, it's very broad, and for the person that would like every day to be different, every patient to be different, and constantly making new decisions, uh, this is a really great field for them. As a technician, we cannot stay stagnant, we have to stay up to date 
on all the changes. And so that makes it a, a very exciting and interesting field because uh, things are, are changing. Five years from now, things will be different than they are today. And so I think for a lot of sonographers, that's one of the draws to the field. There's a lot of variability. We are able to help people. We're, we're helping patients by trying to, you know, find a diagnosis for their physician. If you would like more information about our program, you can contact me with the information that's provided on the screen, and I'll be happy to talk more with you about the program and the details. An apprentice has provided instruction to strengthen knowledge in their trade area. The combination of related instruction and on-the-job experience is essential in training students for the skilled trades. An apprenticeship is a training model and what it does is it takes a person uh, who is new to a field or craft and pairs them with somebody who's been doing it for a long time, who's considered a journey person. And that is a way to pass that knowledge from an experienced worker to an inexperienced worker. There was a time when apprenticeship was used in just about all crafts. You go back long enough, stonemasons, silversmiths, printers, that was the primary method of passing that knowledge from one generation to the next. Nowadays, we use it in skilled trades, construction crafts. We use it in emerging technologies like mechatronics. We use it in several new fields that we haven't even traditionally thought about apprenticeships, but we use it in medical, we use it in IT. The state of Michigan just signed one for teachers to be apprenticeable. The benefits of apprenticeship is for the trainee is a very low or no cost education because every apprenticeship model is made up of on the job learning and classroom instruction. And most of the time, that classroom instruction is paid for by the employer. Della College recently partnered with the Great Lakes Bay Michigan Works to host for employers an Apprenticeship 101. So we laid out all the advantages of an apprenticeship and how they can get started and what should work for them. We had employers there that already have apprenticeships who were able to answer some questions for those employers who were just thinking about starting an apprenticeship. Afterwards, we did a tour of our labs here at Delta, and we showed them firsthand the equipment and how up-to-date we keep our labs. Also, in 2015, Dow decided to start up the apprenticeship program again here and across the U.S., and we partnered with Delta College to do our instruction for all our coursework in Millwright machine repair, instrument electrical, and in chemical processing. Um, our agreement of DOLs for a two-year degree for them to complete and the instruction here is excellent. So since we started this agreement with Delta and the apprenticeship, we've had 46 apprentices complete their DOL and their two-year degrees with Delta and I currently have an additional 30 going to Delta right now. The one thing that I'd like to leave you with on apprenticeships is the fact that it's really getting a lot of attention right now. There's never been a better time for a person to seek out an apprenticeship as more and more employers are looking to start apprenticeships, there's over a thousand apprenticeable occupation. So there's really something for everyone. For more information on apprenticeship, please use the information on the screen to get a hold of us. The recent midterm elections presented an opportunity to teach Delta students the importance of democracy. And by voting, citizens are participating in a democratic process. To learn more about Delta's efforts to increase student voter turnout, we talked to Lisa Lawrenson, Professor of Political Science. Delta College believes that our students have unique insight and creativity and energy that can lend a lot to our community and creating the kind of community in which they want to live. Of course, elections are a big part of that. And so Delta is very intentional about inviting its students to engage in elections and also giving them the knowledge, the skills, and the motivation to do so. Going back to 2011, Delta College became part of a national initiative called the Democracy Commitment, now called Community Colleges for Democracy. But by signing on to this national initiative, the college committed itself to not just preparing students for a job, 
while that's very important, we also committed to preparing students for citizenship, for educating for the sake of democracy. So in planning for the 2022 midterm elections, Delta College put together an action plan that we submit to a national challenge for colleges and universities. It's called the All In Campus Democracy Challenge. And being a part of this challenge positions the college for national recognition for our efforts. So we submit an action plan every election cycle. And again, we're very intentional in that action plan about committing to how we're going to engage the whole student. All throughout campus, um, throughout this election cycle, the hope is that students have gotten the sense that Delta is inviting them to participate. Uh, we have uh, signage across the campus um, with our Delta Votes logo. We uh, have I vote because cards that students have filled out that we have plastered across the uh, campus and the off-campus centers on windows where students are communicating to their peers why voting is important to them. Uh, we held an election engagement week uh, in the weeks leading up to the election where students could play election jeopardy and get nonpartisan voting guides, look up their voting location and view a sample ballot. We have a beautiful display in the library inviting students to participate and giving them the resources to do so. And of course, voter registration is always a big deal here on campus. So as we're preparing students to engage in this election, we want to make sure that they have the knowledge to do so, but also the skills. And that's really what's behind our deliberative dialogue style events that we hold on campus. We have held three deliberative dialogues on the ballot proposals that Michiganders voted on on November 8th. So the democracy commitment at Delta College is all about creating a culture here where students get the sense that Delta empowers and invites them to become agents for positive change in their community. We want them to have the confidence to participate in the election knowing that uh, they have the foundation of knowledge as well as the necessary skills and then also of course the heart to give back to their community in a way that's going to create a positive change. Michigan Works recently hosted My Career Quest, an experience unlike any other. Interactive, hands-on, informational, and inspiring career opportunities delivered directly to the students from working professionals in high-demand industries. To learn more about the event, we talked to Sue Roche, Assistant Dean, Business and Technology Division. Michigan Career Quest is a chance for us to engage in an interactive way with students from all across this area and Region 7B. Approximately 5,000 students showed up at the event where industry partners came in with educators and provided hands-on engagements for students. This year's event was split into four sections, agriculture, construction management, advanced manufacturing, and health sciences with IT as an overarching into each of the sectors. Students were offered opportunities in each of the sectors to engage in hands-on work and get exposure to the different career opportunities that are available in our region. Employers and educators partnered throughout the event to present these hands-on activities to students and they moved through each of the four sectors throughout the day. We are here at the My Career Quest for Michigan Works uh, with the ambulance service doing a demonstration on EMS as a career industry and using some hands-on tools to allow the students to see what some of the things are that we may do from day to day. One of the stations that we have provided for them is to race on a performing CPR, doing chest compressions on mannequins, and they can watch themselves compete against each other to see who's doing the best job. We're at Career Quest Mid Michigan 2022. It's a great event. We've actually, we brought in a spider crane 
We've also brought a rubber tire backhoe simulator for the students to operate. It gives them a really good perspective as far as the hands-on on the career exploration, what's out there for opportunities within the construction trade. They'll hear about what operating engineers do, relate with what the work is, get a little taste of it. We are in a, a, an interesting state in our economy. The work is there. We have the gray tsunami going on where we're going to start leaving the marketplace and uh, go to retirement. We need the next generation to come up and fill these positions. This is our distracted driving course. Uh, it's part of our trauma services. We do community outreach and injury prevention. The goggles that the students are putting on simulate what it would be like to drive and text at the same time. They completely black out. So that would be what it would be like when you're driving down the road and take your phone and go to look at it. So it blocks it out. We've put several distractions within our course just to simulate what it would be more like real life. Since motor vehicle crashes are such a huge cause of injury, this will help uh, hopefully keep everybody a little bit more aware of what's going on on the road. This is a hands-on interactive event for students where they get exposed to a multitude of career opportunities and it's a paperless event. So it's not a traditional career event. It's all about engaging the students and really exposing them to career opportunities in all of the fields in our region. Delta was well represented at this event. We had many faculty and staff there, and we also had faculty bring along many students who helped participate with these 8th through 10th graders on the various activities that they presented throughout the day. Delta is very proud to partner in this event with industry employers, with Michigan Works, and with other educational partners and we're really looking forward to doing this again next year and offering kids exposure to these important career pathways and hands-on activities. A telescope is always a popular gift, especially during the holidays. It can be a portal to the universe and provide a lifetime of learning and enjoyment. To help sort out what you should look for when buying a telescope, we talked to Mike Murray, astronomer and Delta College Planetarium Manager. Hi everybody, Mike Murray here with the Delta College Planetarium to talk about telescopes. Now telescopes can be a very popular item for the holiday shopping list. And before you jump into a telescope, you might want to, you might want to do a little bit of research because they do come in different types, different sizes, and different prices. And all of that is going to depend on what kind of objects you want to observe and how much you're willing to spend. A lot of times you see these refracting telescopes, but I always like to recommend binoculars to start with if you haven't done much stargazing yet, because you'll get a little, you'll get a good flavor for stargazing with binoculars. Okay, with a refractor, these are probably the most common types you'll see. They use lenses, but they can get expensive pretty quickly, especially when you get into larger apertures. That's what's most important about a telescope is the light gathering ability. Now you can also get into reflectors. These will give you a lot more bang for the buck because they gather more light. You notice there's a mirror at one end to gather the light to bring an, uh, the eyepiece up to the front, which is where you focus the light. But they have different mountings and you can get some that will track the sky, that you do yourself, some that you track with a computer mount or a computer pad. But I really like the simpler brand called the Dobsonian mount, which allows you to just pull and push to track with the sky by hand, but these are a lot more affordable, probably only about $400 for an eight inch telescope. And these can be relatively portable. Now, if you want something even more portable and you're not worried as much about cost, there is the Schmidt Cassegrain which is the best of both worlds, lenses and a mirror. You see the shorter tube and a nice, sturdy, strong mount. You, those are very, very important qualities. If the mount is rickety, like a camera tripod, nope, forget it. You need to find something that is very sturdy. There are some good brands out there, so avoid the box stores. You need something either directly from the telescope sites like Mead or Celestron or Orion and you can find some really great 
buys out there, and some of them are out there that are used as well. Delta College recently hired Dr. Pam Ross McLean as its Chief Officer of Culture, Belonging, and Community Building. Let's find out more about this new employee and her role here on campus. Welcome to Dateline Delta. Pam, could you please tell us about your career and educational background? Absolutely. So I started my career as a middle school teacher. Um, I then went into higher education, um, returned to public schools as an administrator, went back to higher education, and uh, most recently transitioned here to be the Chief Officer of Culture, Belonging, and Community Building. Um, that pretty much is my career. My educational background was in English education, Afro-American studies, um, with a PhD in curriculum and instruction. So your position at Delta is a new one. Could you tell us a little bit about why it was added and, and what through your work uh, you hope to be able to affect? So they added it because they heard about me and they said, oh, <laughs> we need to create a position for this fabulous person. Uh, well, actually, so there are many institutions who are creating um, chief officers for diversity, equity, and inclusion work. I think Delta is very unique because the use of the words um, culture belonging and community building were very intentional. I believe that this position was created so that we could make sure that we are living in uh, an institutional culture that reflects our values at Delta, and we certainly value um, creating an environment where everyone feels welcome, where everyone feels like they belong, because those are essential ingredients for helping people to self-actualize. And I know sometimes equity and equality get confused, and I'm wondering if, if you could talk to us a little bit about how those are different. Yeah, there, there are lots of semantic uh, challenges when you start talking about diversity, equity, and inclusion. And I think the reason why people have a hard time understanding that equality is giving everyone the same thing, and equity is making sure that everyone has what they need. And so I think they get confused because if you think about the civil rights era, if you think about women's rights, people were yelling, we want equality. We were on equality. They weren't saying we want equity. <laughs> so um, helping people to understand the need to shift our thinking around um, the thought that we just need to give folks equal access to we need to make sure we're getting equitable outcomes is the work ahead. I think once you understand the difference between the two, then you are engaged in the complex work of figuring out how to divide resources such that they are being targeted for the areas where there is the greatest need. And here at Delta, can you think of a project or initiative that might increase equity? So, sure. I mean, Delta does, Delta has lots of different functions, but we are in the business of educating folks, right? And so one of the things that we're engaged in now that I think is going to have a powerful um, impact on equity is we are disaggregating our student achievement data to see who's faring well and who is not faring as well. And then we're going to come up with ways to target interventions, target resources, to close the opportunity gaps. And so that is a way of championing equity. So essentially we're saying that if we're deploying resources where they should be, then we shouldn't see um, our racial and ethnic students or our first gen students or our veteran students or our women students struggling. Right? And if they are, then we need to figure out how to do some targeted um, interventions to support closing those opportunity gaps. 
Well, thank you so much for taking time to talk with us today. I think you've given us a, a lot to think about, and we welcome you to Delta College. Thank you. It's my pleasure to be here. I'd like to wish Pam good luck in her endeavors. Now let's see what's on the Dateline Delta calendar of events. The Delta College Planetarium is hosting a series of shows during the month of December. For more information about these shows and events happening at the Planetarium, visit their website at delta.edu slash planetarium. A monthly Families Against Narcotics Forum provides information, resources, and support to end the opioid epidemic. The event takes place on Thursday, December 8th from 6 to 8 p.m. in room N007 on the main campus. Delta College is hosting a dual enrollment virtual information event on Thursday, December 8th from 5 to 6 p.m. To reserve your seat, register for free at delta.edu.zoom.us. After registering, you'll receive a confirmation email containing information about joining the webinar. Delta College is hosting a FAFSA completion event on Monday, December 19th from noon to 2 p.m. in room J130. For a complete list of items to bring, contact Delta at 989-686-9080. For further information on these events or other campus activities, contact the Office of Marketing and Public Information at 989-686-9490 or visit our website at www.delta.edu. Well, that wraps up our show. Please join us again on December 18th when we highlight what's happening here at Delta College, one of America's leading community colleges. Now let's visit a fundraising event for the Possible Dream Program. For Dateline Delta, I'm Dave Morley. Thanks for watching. Local productions seen on Delta College Public Media are made possible with support from viewers like you. Thank you.